Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Karen. I am a lefty who loves fountain pens, inks, journaling, hobonichi, planning, and all of that good stuff. So if you enjoy those kinds of content, subscribe, hop on to my channel for more videos. Alright, so for today's episode, I guess, I will be sharing with you my most used fountain pens and fountain pen inks. And let me qualify that. When I say most used, it means I have not rotated them back into my storage. I have been refilling that particular pen with the same shade of ink only because I didn't feel the need to take it out of my current rotation. So yeah, I guess you could say that I have been using these pen and ink combos for the past three months or so and what i mainly use them for is for journaling also a bit of planning and mostly now that we are back in the office if we have some seminars or some learning sessions i use that pen and with me in this fine evening i am doing this video on a glorious wednesday evening but i am indulging myself with a glass of red wine this is cabernet sauvignon 2019 i'm not a connoisseur i just love you know the occasional wine so if you are under 18 please do not drink and if you are over 18 please drink responsibly okay that being said enough of the public service announcements i will be sharing with you my favorite inks and pens for the past three months or so the first one that I would like to mention is this Jinhao 82 and the ink that I have been using this with is the Pilot Suwairo in the blue black and this one has been my staple in my A6 five year Tet show. So ever since I got the Jinhao 82, I have been very adventurous with using you know, permanent document archival ink because, you know, the price point is really, really good. And for me, it doesn't make me nervous if I ink it with, you know, permanent archival ink. So this one is a staple in my five-year tet show. I love writing in this one. Um, the extra fine nib is really good it's not scratchy at all. It really writes finely. It's an extra fine because I'm a lefty and I really want to make sure that, you know, I put as little ink as possible so that it dries quickly. So this combo is really something that I've been using and I don't think I will be putting this down anytime soon. Okay, so I'll put that here. The second ink and pen combo that I have been using nonstop is... Platinum Meteor in Coral, and it's currently inked with Carbon Black. Okay, so this is also another permanent, you could say waterproof ink. And I will only use this with similar pens. So Platinum ink goes with Platinum pens. And this one is quite cheap. I mean, for the price, it's a good starter pen. I'm really using this as a workhorse in terms of, you know, note-taking, bringing this with me in meetings and also in, you know, the occasional trainings. I have been using this ever since I first inked this up with Carbon Black. I have really been enjoying Carbon Black. I think... That is the most used ink that I have in my collection so far. And that's also considering that I'm a bit holding back on the, the new blackest black ink in the market. Mm -hmm. I'm not in a hurry to buy that new ink, the Chuo Kuro, because I'm really happy with Platinum Carbon Black. And with this combo, yeah, I think this will be a permanent ink that will be here in my meteor okay so that's the second the third ink and pen combo is also another staple and it's also a black 
And this is the Mont Blanc Black Permanent Ink. And this is the 146 Legrand with the Platinum Trim. And for this particular pen, I have this in the Oblique Medium. And I mainly use this for signing checks, signing documents, and contracts that needs, you know, permanent archival ink. Yeah, can't go wrong with Black Permanent. The fourth pen and ink combo is another Jin Hao 82. And this is like the frozen version. Um, if you can see the, the colors, it reminds me of Elsa. Yeah, it was a good marketing strategy by the person who sold this in the fountain pen palenque. And it's currently inked with marine diamine. Uh, I was trying this out. I think this is a fine nib. Yeah, so this is a fine nib. And what I try to do is for the lighter colored um, inks, I try to pair it with more broader nibs. Uh, well, fine is not broad, but in my spectrum of pens, the rare chance that I have fine nib pens are considered broad in my book. So this writes really well and it doesn't put a lot of ink down. Um, as compared to a Western fine. And the marine color, I think everybody should have diamine marine in their collection. It's just so pretty. Okay. The fifth pen and ink combo is a similarly colored ink, which is the Mont Blanc Maya Blue, but it's a bit more on the bluer side compared to the marine. And the ink is housed in this Twisby mini vacuum. And it's also good for commuting. And I always bring this with me in my bag, you know, just to add the pop of color. The demonstrator fountain pens are really good conversation starters, especially in the office. For those who are not really into fountain pens, they really like, you know, seeing the ink swirl around. And as you can see, I'm on my, I don't know, third refill. And this is already about to empty out so i'm gonna refill this again with maya blue just because you know it really pops out of the tomoe river paper so yeah this is my fifth the sixth one is my platinum preppy this is actually my very first fountain pen yeah well i got this from um, the hobonichi store for my 2022 um techos and i'm using the pilot iroshizuku momiji and i really like this pen and ink combo similar to the platinum meteor i think this will be a permanent combination so mainly i use this for you know decorations borders you know um headers titles it's a good contrast to when i write you know with neutral basic colors okay i'm down to my last two so the seventh pen and in combination is this one. This is Diamine's Odenil. This is a really good and surprisingly waterproof ink. And this is actually my very first ink that was given to me as a gift. And it's currently housed in this Twisby Eco Rose Gold with extra fine nib. So this is one of my older Twisbees and they still write pretty well. And I'm really, really finding a lot of, you know, joy <laughs> when I use Twisbees. There's something about Twisbees that for the price, I mean, you can't go wrong, you can buy a lot. But at the same time, there's this tendency for you to just stick to one. The white with the rose gold, I mean, it's such a neutral color. Any, any shade will go with it. So, loving this Odenil, very good for journaling sessions. I may want to, you know, interchange that with the blue black from Pilot. And the last one is the Kaweco Paradise Blue on the Twisby Diamond Clear. It's also in the extra fine. Yeah, it's in the extra fine. And Kaweco's Paradise Blue is a really great 
alternative to the Maya Blue, if you cannot find Maya Blue. I mean, very, very similar colors. I just don't have the Paradise Blue swatched in the ink cards, but I have here a swatch on the Hobonichi. Okay, so this is the Kaweco Paradise Blue. Very similar to Maya Blue. I'm just comparing it side by side. Very pretty similar. So if you don't have any means of getting Maya Blue and you're really obsessed with it, I'd say a good alternative is the Kaweco Paradise Blue. So these are my favorite pen and ink combos for the past three months and I may be just re-inking them up again and again and again. Anyway, I hope to do a separate video on Hobonichi because it's almost Hobonichi season. I hope to share with you my thoughts on the Hobonichi lineup and then uh, maybe on September 1st, I may have already a almost sure lineup of what I will get for the next year. So that's it for this week's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe again if you haven't. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys!